Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with us as we begin our Lenten journey on this solemn Ash Wednesday. We come before you, Lord, mindful of our sinfulness and the ways in which we fall short of your glory in our everyday lives. We ask for your mercy during this period of repentance so that we may begin again and walk in the light of your love. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out our transgressions. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins, and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission, and forgiveness of our sins. Help us by your Holy Spirit to have the strength to overcome the snares of the evil one. Heavenly Father, during this time of reflection, we remember how you lived your life during your time on earth and showed us how to resist temptation during your time in the desert. As this Lenten season begins, remind us that we are but dust. We can do nothing without you. Help us to see the world through the eyes of those in the first Lent season who awaited a savior and awaited new life through you. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. May we use our time this Lenten season to pray, reflect through reading our Bible scriptures daily, and thank you for all the clear directions that you have left 
for us to follow. O oh Lord, we pray that these days of Lent may be an opportunity to grow in faith, hope, and love. We ask all this in and through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Whoa.
58, verses 1 to 12. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if there were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast? but you do not see. Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked face. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I chose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush, and to light in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast day I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the yoke, the tongues of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin, then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spread up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall shine in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a water garden, like a spring of water, whose water never fails. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repair of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
vision, O oh Lord of my heart. with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, on this day which marks the beginning of one of the church's penitential seasons, the season we call Lent, we bow our heads in humility and contrition, deeply conscious that we are a disobedient people. It's a truth which saddens us a truth which grieves the spirit of your church. May your word to us on this night, forgiving God, transform us into the people you would have us to be, a people who seek justice, a people who live in a right relationship with each other and with you, a people who embody your presence in this world. Here, saving God, and answer our prayers on this night, for we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today, Ash Wednesday, marks the beginning of the observance in the church of the season called Lent. That 40 day period, not counting the Sundays, leading up to the celebration of the glorious resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is traditional for the church during Lent to fast, to pray, to be penitential. That is, to show regret for past wrongs, to seek God's forgiveness, and to commit to change from our sinful ways, to repent. On Ash Wednesday, in many Christian communities, people have a smudge of ash in the shape of the cross placed on their foreheads, symbolizing their penitence. The rituals of Ash Wednesday and the season of Lent are well enshrined in the church, many dating back to the time of the ancient Roman Empire. The season is ideally a time for personal reflection and the making of commitments to changes in one's lifestyle. Tonight, the book of Isaiah calls us to a God-inspired observance of these rituals and a commitment to genuine change. Our reading from Isaiah was most likely addressed to the people of Judah as they returned from the 70-year exile in Babylon. These returnees were now seeking to rebuild their community. They had lost their lands, their temple, their families, their very livelihoods. They wondered whether God had deserted them. The prophet Zechariah, at chapter 7, verses 3 to 5, records how the people had fasted every fifth and seventh month whilst they were in Babylon. On their return from Babylon, they continued to practice this ritual. At Isaiah 58 and verse 2, God makes this observation about the people's rituals. Day after day, they seek me. They ask of me righteous judgments. However, it soon becomes obvious that the people's rituals, their fasting, their praying, their being penitent, were not what God desired. It soon becomes obvious 
that these rituals were merely self-serving. When God speaks through the 50th, 50th chapter of Isaiah, he tells the prophet to warn the people in no uncertain manner, in a voice as loud as a trumpet, in a voice everyone could hear. Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day. You ask me for righteous judgments, but then you turn right around and disobey my laws. This must serve as a caution to us in our own observance of our Lenten rituals. If we desire God to act justly towards our community, if we desire God to forgive our past sins and to guide our steps in the future, then our rituals cannot be self-serving. We must not. We cannot merely take on a, pa a posture of humility with heads bowed and dressed in the proverbial sackcloth and smudges of ash. God condemns such rituals as unacceptable. God says he does not hear such prayers, stating emphatically at verse 5, Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. And God goes on to ask rhetorically, Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast that they are acceptable to the Lord? Beloved, self-serving rituals are unacceptable to God. What then are we to do during it? In this text, God offers us a range of actions desirable to him. If we accept that fasting is not merely a ritual, but a biblical injunction, that fasting is that which God demanded of Adam and Eve in the garden, that fasting was part of Jesus' preparation for his earthly ministry, then the actions outlined by the book of Isaiah point us to the very nature of God, to those actions which are by no means self-serving, but which embody the nature of God. Beginning at verses 3 and 4, the prophet identifies for us those actions which are pleasing to God. Speaking on behalf of God, the prophet calls us to, being, to give up being oppressive to our employees. In other words, to pay them a decent wage for decent work in decent working conditions and to pay them on time. He calls us to a fast from quarreling and fighting with our neighbors, to live at peace with one another. And at verse 9, he tells us to fast from speaking evil and pointing fingers, to fast from casting blame on others, to fast from making strife. And God sees fasting as also taking on those actions which point to God's presence in this word. So the prophet tells us at verses 6 and 7, and again at verse 10, that we are to set free the oppressed, that we are to break every chain that holds people in bondage, that we are to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and house the homeless. In other words, we are to break the cycle of poverty and hopelessness which threatens to destroy this Caribbean region. As we reflect on our lives this Lenten season, we must ask, am I contributing to a reduction in child abuse in my land? a reduction in elder abuse, a reduction in domestic violence, a change in the treatment of the drug addicts and sex workers in this region, a change in the treatment of illegal immigrants in this region. In these verses, 
God is calling us to be the embodiment of God's presence for those around us. That, declares the prophet, is the nature of the ritual, the kind of fast acceptable to God during this season of Lent. The book of Isaiah is consistent in its claims about God's nature. It claims that God desires justice for all people. From as early as chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, the book calls on the people of God to fast, to remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. This theme of justice being central to God's nature runs throughout the book. At chapter 30 and verse 18, the book again describes God as a God of justice. And in writing of God's servant at chapter 42, the book attributes these words to God. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Early in his own ministry, Jesus would endorse the words of Isaiah chapter 61, embracing the book's call as the reason for his ministry and declaring at Luke chapter 4, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. The clear and consistent message of scripture is that God is a God of justice, a God concerned with dignity and genuine respect for all people and not with mere rituals. And for all those who hear and respond to God's call during this Lenten season, hear also his promise at verses 8 and 9. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. The glory of the Lord shall be your regard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. The prophet's audience, those returning from Babylon, were entrusted with the task of rebuilding the walls of Jer Jerusalem, rebuilding the temple, rebuilding their very lives. Today, the church in the Caribbean is tasked with rebuilding our communities racked by gun violence, rebuilding our schools, devastated by the pandemic, rebuilding our economies, seemingly forever immersed in poverty, rebuilding our families, devastated by domestic abuse, elder abuse, and child abuse. Tonight, like the people of the prophet's time, we too are called to be repairs of the breach, to rebuild the ruins, and to raise up a foundation of many generations. Tonight, we can be assured of God's presence with us on this journey if we eschew miracles and instead pursue justice. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
bring. God of justice, we plead with you for a change of heart during this period of Lent. We plead with you for the transformation of the societies here in the Caribbean. And we plead tonight for justice to prevail in these lands. That all peoples may experience the goodness of your powerful right hand. Look, no Lord, with favor and compassion on these lands and become our rear guard, we pray. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.